Hey everybody, Brandon with FastDataScience.ai, and this is another episode of This Week in AI. Yes, I have made it through the first quarter of 2022 doing this show every week with all of you. So I want to thank you for your support as we get into today's show. I've got some great content today. For those of you who haven't watched before, this is the show where I bring you all the latest news and insights that hit my inbox. I organize all those articles, tee up some of the ones that I think are most relevant, most interesting, and share those with you. It's an opportunity for both of us to learn about the fields of data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. In today's show, just as a little primer, we're going to talk talk about an area of data science that makes me uncomfortable because it is so new still. I'll just give you a little primer. It entangles my brain. We'll also talk a little bit about how artificial intelligence is getting mental, and then we'll get into uh, a little bit on some current events that are going on uh, and talk a little bit about how even you should consider becoming or learning at least some of the fundamentals to data science. Okay, let's go ahead and jump in. So today is March 25th, 2022. And as I mentioned, it is the last Friday of Q1 for 2022. So if nothing else, hopefully this show today is a bit of a distraction for you. So let's go ahead and take a look at what our bot pulled out of my inbox for this week. We had 120 articles, so 40 articles more than we had the prior week uh, that were organized into four topics. The first topic was interesting and something that I don't think I've seen before, platforms. Quite a few news articles talking about new platforms that are coming out and updates to existing platforms to further support data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence in business and also help to democratize some of those capabilities helping to move the needle on the skills required to be able to leverage them. Number two was education, which was also sort of lumped with jobs. Uh, not surprising, those two can often be conflated because, you know, job training is a form of education and then there's lots of education opportunities and articles. Look, at the end of the day, our industry is in huge demand. So there is lots of need to get folks educated on the tools and technologies that help to enable data science for businesses. Uh, and so it's always a big topic area in the news. Number three is trends, another common topic that we see talking about what people or journalists think is coming. And then topic number four was ethics. Uh, I think I've seen this before, but we had quite a few articles talking a little bit about ethics in AI. And I just caught that I've got this little aberrant hair. I got a haircut, yes. Look, data scientists need haircuts too, okay? So, you know, I'm still dealing with my hair issues. All right, let's go ahead and get into our first news flash. Okay, so I wanted to do this because, um, as you know, Women in Data Science is an organization that I have promoted before uh, and continue to support. Uh, they just held their global conference uh, recently uh, with huge impact. Here are some of those statistics that I pulled off of their website. What I want to make you aware of is that there are ongoing Women in Data Science events throughout spring. So check out your local Women in Data Science chapter. I will be participating with Women in Data Science for my region, which is Puget Sound. I'm checking out their conference, which I believe is on April 26th. Uh, and so I have already signed up to check out some of those talks. I encourage you to do the same. Check out what they're talking about. Lots of cool and interesting topics and new ways of looking at topics that have been around in our field for quite some time. So again, I encourage you to look into your local chapter. Okay. So what is the first article that hit my inbox? It's around jobs and education and training and, and also a little bit of trends here, right? The new age of engineering, of the engineering data scientist is here. Okay, we've heard this before, right? I wrote an article a while back on whether or not data science was dead because that was based off of another article that was written about data science being dead. And that was like five years ago. So. Fast forward to today, and what we really see is a lot more fields, particularly engineering, talking about how to take advantage 
of the significant skill gap that exists in the marketplace due to the huge demand around the need for professionals that can leverage the tools and technologies of data science and machine learning and artificial intelligence. And who better to be positioned, right, than an engineer because they already involve themselves with code and infrastructure and server technology. So they have some sense of how all that kind of goes together, which indeed is extremely important for data science. But it certainly is not everything. So why do I care about this article? Well, one of the things that I thought was really interesting is if you watched a past episode of mine, you'll recall that I talked about how Levi's was really spearheading, educating their entire workforce with the tools of data science. And they were taking the approach that everybody should learn how to think this way. Whether or not you actually end up being a developer was less important. We wanted the whole business, right? They wanted the whole business to think in that way. Well, Rolls-Royce did something very similar, I found out in this article. They have spent over 78,000 hours training all of their staff on the tools and technologies and benefits of artificial intelligence and all of its related things. Do you have to be an engineer, though, to be in this field? Absolutely not. I have covered other non-technical roles that are artificial intelligence or machine learning or data science related. In addition to that, even in the technical space, there is a huge distinction between the researcher data scientist and the productionizer data scientist or machine learning engineer, if you will. Watch my video on the distinction to learn a little bit more, but the idea here is that engineers are really good at turning things into production scale products, right? Making them applications and embedding them in those applications. But we still need researchers. We still need folks who have the critical thinking skills to be able to tackle new problems that don't have clear solutions with data and explore and experiment and iterate even though a lot of those experimentations are going to fail. So we still need both people in this space. You don't have to just be an engineer. Bring your domain expertise to the problem to help inform how you look at and analyze that data. Learn how to leverage data science models and algorithms to be able to open up new potential insights and new questions that you might want to answer with that data. In short, push your comfort zone and focus on mastering the basics, whether you're an engineer or not. Those basics are achievable and accessible to everybody. Okay, moving right along. The next article, which I'm partly covering, but don't worry about it. It is an article that is out of my comfort zone. Quantum machine learning. So I know a little bit about it, and there's no question, I've got some friends that are following this pretty closely, really interested in how this new compute resource can enable and further enable machine learning. What we know is that at the end of the day, quantum computing is still maturing. We're still not entirely sure what the impact is going to be on the machine learning space. We've seen some successes, but there are still lots of questions about what the limitations are and there's actually a lot of criticism out there about those limitations this article tackles one of those criticisms which is the idea that quantum computing has a limit due to its complexity to how much data it requires to be able to compute and train machine learning models in this particular article it was very clear that understanding its value is still something that we're learning the article talks about using quantum entanglement to improve the computing efficiency of quantum computing machine learning algorithms. Okay, that's that's where my understanding stops. I don't know how you improve or increase entanglement. I'm not a quantum physicist, but you better believe I'm interested now. So I'm going to look more into it. My favorite part of the article, though, has nothing to do with quantum computing. It is this quote. They've recently begun investigating whether quantum computing could aid machine learning a branch of AI that studies algorithms that better themselves over time. I have a little bit of a thing with this quote. Obviously, the person who wrote this wasn't necessarily a data scientist because I don't think most data scientists would describe machine learning this way and differentiate it from AI in this way. Let me just let me just give you my interpretation. Look, what I think they're talking about here is reinforcement learning, although that's not what the article was about. Uh, and so let's just help us make clear distinctions between data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence, which for me, artificial intelligence is just the embedding of machine learning in applications or data science products and 
algorithms. Okay, enough of that. I thought it was funny. Hopefully you did too. Okay, so what caught my eye this week? Well, this is really interesting and this is where artificial intelligence gets mental. Check this out. California-based startup is developing smarter mental health care infrastructure using machine learning and voice biomarkers. Okay, so super, super interesting, really cool. What I love about this, why I cared about this article is because it's such a cool application of data science to essentially a new type of data, right? In this case, WAV files, voice recordings. It is a simple classification problem though. All they're trying to do is understand whether or not they can classify the likelihood based off of how a person is talking in the wave file, the tone and all the different things that go into sort of um, the data that make up that wave file. But they're using that data to just classify whether or not that person might be suffering from anxiety or depression or some other mental health related issue. Okay, uh, and and that's really cool that we're able to take wave files, right, voice data, uh, and then apply them to these simple classification schemes. So there's real human impact here, but I think there's also challenges, right? So one of the things that we do talk about on this show, and, and it's, you know, a really popular theme in the AI space is ethics. So we have to be careful, right? How are we training these classifications to identify those at risk for mental health issues? Uh, are, is there bias in that data, right? And, and you can think of a lot of ways in which bias could creep in to leveraging WAV files for these types of classifications. So accents could make a big difference in how well that model performs. Uh, slang or the use of different language types, phonemes, the use of different phonemes across different cultures. What I love about the company that's doing this is that they're really trying to integrate a global data set to try and tackle some of those potential sources of bias in their model building. One other thing uh, that I thought was, um, you know, kind of a missed opportunity here. Um, personally, if I was starting this company, I would have called it Mentality AI. Mentality. <laughs> okay. All right. That's stupid. I know. Okay. But I did want to give you a bonus. So here's a bonus. I found an article that actually is in Medium uh, that takes you through how to leverage audio files to build machine learning and train machine learning models. So audio deep learning made simple, sound classification, step-by-step, -step, an end-to-end -end example. It's a great article, it's a great tutorial for those of you who are so interested in learning about how we can take wave files and transform those into data uh, that we can leverage to train machine learning models with. Um, check this out. The links for all of the articles are here and so I'm gonna Give you a second to take a look at these they're in order of presentation uh, but i highly encourage taking a deeper dive into some of these articles i would love to know if you disagree with any of my interpretations uh, so please comment share subscribe like do all the the, the facebook and you know youtube and uh, I, I, social media i guess I, I don't know do all those things that you do thank you so much for tuning in again i hope you have a wonderful weekend and look for more next week bye everybody